All right, welcome everyone. It's December 7th. We're uh, 11 weeks into US independence. Today we're continuing the conversation we started last week about Prometheus exporter data we'd like to see added. Um, we can do a quick recap of, of what we discussed yesterday. Before we get into that, as we always do, I don't know if there's anything on the software side from Stephen or uh, anyone else on the AF want to add? Yeah, just one small update is that uh, I think this coming Monday is is what we'll be targeting for the next CDT release. Um, so I think that'll be 3.1 and that's what we're targeting at this time. I think Dune's going to follow probably within a week or so of that, but just trying to like wrap all of this up before we really get deep into um, like the, the holiday-ish season for people. So that's what we're working towards right now. Um, that I, I feel pretty confident about CDT for Monday, and then um, I'll have a clearer update on Dune, I think, next week. Okay. Uh, I have a question. Is there any um, plan for a, a Leap 321 release with the code that uh, makes uh, blocks go faster? I know that we are working. Discussion on that yesterday. Yeah, I I know that we've been working through some discussion about a potential patch release. Uh, I don't think that we've addressed when we would uh, perform a patch release, but I think that there are actually a, a couple of things that we've identified an opportunity for a three dot two dot one. Um, that kind of needs a little bit more discussion before I can give a clear timeline around that. Okay, but I guess meantime I can. Uh... Kevin patched the code to pull that PR in uh, once it's finalized. Yeah. What do we call that? Is that Kevver? How do you how do you version those patches? <laughs> but yeah, that, that's it from our end. Uh, nothing uh, too big. Cool. Thank you. Um, all right. So recapping from the where we left off last week on Prometheus Explorer. Uh, some of the things we'd like to see, ability to configure how deep you monitor, minimize impact to node while gathering statistics, running on a different thread, everything that we're currently logging, get info, head block, last irreversible block, etc. cetera. Uh, configs of the node EOS runtime is OC enabled, the console is logging on the features. Uh, block logs, full node or trim node. In the future, some alternative get info endpoint that formats the data as JSON. And I think this was mostly coming from uh, Michael. I'm sure that we've got um, yeah, others a on the bit, line. Maybe a little bit on that. I, I did talk to uh, Chris, who's doing the uh, Prometheus implementation right now. And he mentions, you know, like the, the configuration information that's there, that Prometheus is really kind of set up as a time series type database, uh, mm -hmm. you know, sort of reporting. And so things like what the config is um, doesn't quite fit into that model very well. Um, it does, you know, but it doesn't. You kind of got to hack Prometheus. Yeah, but I would a lot say of times, there should be a new API endpoint like v1 producer get config or something which dumps the config back config i mean that would that would work as well just an endpoint but a lot of times in prometheus you you know define it as you know like oc oc enabled and it's a boolean over one and then you know whatever you yeah. deal with on or off or you can roll text and stuff in there but i mean back yeah, to that right. general concept I love, I use Prometheus, but just some way of exposing it. I think config as JSON would be better, would be more usable. I, yeah, I, I remember last time um, I asked that question and then the point was made, I think maybe by Ted, that that there could be some value in um, uh, still logging in the current config into a time series because it gives you a history effectively you can pinpoint like oh that's when that config changed you know that sort of thing um so it's it's not 
it's not data that's going to do this like in any kind of meaningful way it's but on then off then yeah. off for two years then on for three years things like that or six for years and years and then seven for years and years I, you'd be surprised when you run 40 50 nodes and you're tracking version numbers and stuff like that now nah, i get I, I mean you're right they're much more static but you get a lot of them out there you'll you'll actually see a lot more activity than you know one or two a year but yeah i mean it's definitely different than uh head block or lib or or whatever but um anyway all right let's move on uh can, can we uh does that somebody have a list of what the existing pr implements in terms of metrics i saw there was a pr the other day to implement some first one so maybe we can so i'd that. say there's there's hardly anything yet i mean it's more the framework uh, at this point there are a few things in there that um you know the the, the pr is kind of working with but at this point it's it's i'd say it's kind of wide open in terms of uh of, of what what you, what we're looking for okay i just wondered if you had some that were already accepted so we don't have to discuss them so it's like oh that's already done i mean there is a small set but i mean it's <laughs> at this point so small I, i'm not sure it's worth um commenting about it except you know the the goal is to kind of go through the ones that were listed in the original um um issue or or wherever that's documented i'm forgetting now where that's documented um you know and see which of those are are possible and well, trying to stick the within list. the mentality of the bully or number based prometheus right you're still trying to focus on using it as prometheus versus just defining a info point yeah do we have the uh, original list somewhere that we're working from in this release? I mean, I could probably. Yeah, oh, it's, nice. there's, there's Matthew, there's what you submitted, which uh, I think it was you that submitted it, um, that we could pull up for sure. Um, yeah, here it is. Um, thanks, Stephen. I think another thing that we talked about was the uh, the distinction between node status and chain status and that we might want to focus on one of the two first probably node status right is that jive with how people are thinking about it matthew did uh, well, a great node status is definitely easier than chain status mm -hmm. right yeah so we can definitely start with that and this list that i created has both in it you know, mm -hmm. I just looked at all the charts Some that I had and then just dumped it all on a list here. So well, and that's uh, basically what I kind of did or charts <laughs> that used to work that no longer work because I had to it's so manual it just broke. But yeah, he has some of the local node information, you know, like uh, CPU usage per thread for node OS, things like that. But you know, minor even config or or get info style which i rattled off several of them but yeah so are we going through the list daniel keeps switching the screen so we can't see it but i'm back type oh, notes <laughs> <laughs> so obviously that that's what matthew monitors some of what matthew monitors on his nodes in addition to the chat yeah, so i guess the request is to find the things that are the the node related stuff right from this yeah so like uh the the first one is the second one is the third one is yeah so first the up, first five i guess are mm -hmm. node related stuff because you can get that right that's specific to a node <clears throat> these five yep Right, the the number of yeah. forks by producer, by anything by producer, obviously that's a, a network kind of uh, metric. Right. right, and those are some of the black box metrics we're struggling to see when yeah, chasing. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I'm. What do we call this? Node metrics. If the if the first version just talks about Node US itself. Oh, it's beautiful. It's, I, I, it's I, I better than nothing. Spit that so, out. Yep. 
<clears throat> and I think those are stateful somewhere, right? I mean, that's that's somewhere in its memory, so you should be able to kind of query and dump them. Who am I is, Matthew, is the second one there unapplied transaction key sizes? Is that number of transactions or bytes or what? What are we talking about? Number of say transactions. Yeah. Okay. Right. Technically, so we, there's both, but it's mostly the number. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but but yeah. So this is exactly the discussion that we were talking about earlier. Is that currently the software limits it in terms of number of bytes, but it measures it in terms of number of transactions. So if okay. I want to limit it, what do I need to set the number of bytes to? Mm, I don't know because I don't know how many bytes the current thing takes. So uh, you know, I think enhancement requests coming. Uh, can we limit the number of transactions in the queue by number of transactions? Uh, or can we measure this in terms of bytes? <laughs> One way or the other it wouldn't be helpful. So or potentially that's two endpoints. One is transaction count. The other is megabytes or bytes, yeah. I guess, if you... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, both of those. I think it would be interesting also to potentially limit it by the number by the time of the speculative transaction execution. So you do it in terms of like actual um, CPU time. Oh, if it's greater than X, then throw it out. Yeah. Yeah, because if it's more than whatever, 330 milliseconds, then I'll never get in a block anyway. Or we already throw this out. Well, I wasn't talking about individual. I'm just talking total. Like, oh, total. you know, yeah. if you've got three hours worth of of processing queued up in your in your unapplied transaction queue, are you really going to be able to get through that anytime soon? No. So you know you can so so act so actually this metric has three things. It's the number, the total amount of bytes, and the total amount of CPU. Yep. 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 Yeah, speculative CPU of yep. that queue. Yep. There a note there that I should be noting a number number total number of bytes. Yeah, What's total number. Thing? Yeah, total number total number of bytes and total number, number of spec speculative execution time. And that's specific to the uh, unapplied transaction yeah. queue sizes. Yeah. Yes. So we just we just made that one three. We turned one mm -hmm. thing into three. Got it. Is there a similar pattern for blacklisted or do some of those not apply for the blacklisted? Well, blacklisted might have like blacklisted by what? Blacklisted by uh, account, blacklisted by key, blacklisted by uh, contract, because there's settings for each of those. Yep. So you're probably going to want a total, right? Like, to, and then all those individuals. Well, it's one of those Prometheus metrics with like the little sub metrics in inside it. So you can split it into uh, sub, so that way you can generate the total or the seat by type. A lot of times, I just I know that all three would equal the total and and just yeah, add so them all together need, versus the yeah. You don't metric, need a but, total. Yeah, the, the individual <laughs> yep. ones tell you. But it, it's the way you define it. So you just say blacklisted transactions and then inside a little curly brace type equals whatever and then the number and then you can roll it up easy. So my Prometheus knowledge is pretty thin here. Uh, so did I hear that if you've got something that accumulates into a total, you, there's no reason to export the total because Prometheus can easily provide that for you? Yes. Okay. As long as you define it as like a key with a type associated with it, but it's not like three individual keys, it's one key with a type. Okay, then it, it'll give you the total for that, uh, yeah, automatically. because it knows that those are related. So okay, you can, all right, makes sense. And it, for this one, is is are all would all these be defined by count of transactions? Yeah, I think that's just count. I don't yeah. know if there's any. Other details. count or sum of of bytes. It's just, it's just the running counter, right? 
to be in. Well, yeah, I don't, we're not storing it, so there's no reason to report bytes, really, right? The 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 unapplied one is true. Is to true, I'm thinking that's unapplied. all sitting right. in memory somewhere, right? Uh, yeah. Taking up space. Right, it's going down my network pipe. Apparently, <laughs> <laughs> it's crushing the bandwidth usage. And is that just just for my knowledge? Is that a metric that would always increase, or is there? Yeah, it's just a counter. It's just yeah. Increases. Okay. So a counter since the last reset. Yeah, was, since you started Node US, it just goes up, right? Yeah. Right. You start Node US, it starts. Because we can do diffs and and you can say diff for the last hour or whatever. So the point yeah. is just two data points, and it's smart enough to figure out all the rest. So yeah. Yeah, none of these need internal counters to keep track of averages or anything, right? Prometheus will handle all that. So, uh, whereas the unapplied transactions will go up and down based on queuing, right? Yeah. Okay. So it's a gauge rather than a counter in Prometheus yep. speak. <clears throat> okay. Are we clear on these five? Uh, scheduled transactions, do we need to talk about our subjective billing, the last two? I think those are the same, right? Well, I mean, we haven't read, there's lots of scheduled transactions out there. Oh, are they scheduled anymore? How does it even work with the new? Well, deferred, it's MC. deferred transactions, yeah. right? So yeah, when you deprecate deferred. <laughs> well, then you don't need it, but deferred is still That's there. A... Yeah, so what are we actually measuring with subjective billing sizes? Subjective billing is the number of accounts that have subjective billing applied to them. Okay. Yes, my, my, dis my description of these issues was uh, Kevin-level description. Uh, you know, Kevin can probably interpret it, but anybody else probably has a hard time understanding what I'm writing. Here. Yeah, that's just the count. You don't really care about the cumulative. The, yes, the number of accounts that have a subjective yeah. billing is currently what the, there's a chart for that. Mm -hmm. I, I think if we tried to report um, subjective billing for each individual account, it would just be gigantic. So I don't Correct. think we can yeah. actually do that. Yeah, I don't think I don't that's think we can do that, that either. Because it's like seventy thousand accounts or something on Wax or something right now. Yeah. So that's not doable. Otherwise, oh. yeah. Uh, so it's just got to be the the count. I, I think for for that. Would there be a? Hmm, I don't know. Is there a way to like create not like create snapshot, but dump dump it to a text file or something just so you could see it if you wanted to if it's sitting there as a well, yeah. The, yeah you need an api called v1 producer get subjective accounts or something correct and just yeah have a separate thread please <laughs> anyway that's an idea because like, we added that in like 3.2 there's like get unapplied transactions api call right that returns the list so there's no reason oh. you shouldn't be able to do the same for subjective give me the list Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess I, I got to look at three point two and see what's new, but that's not in there yet, right? Yeah. So that would be a GitHub issue, a new one. If we if we want to do that at a new endpoint for getting subjective uh, billing, uh, get a get subjective build account info or something. So I guess I'll create that one. Seems fitting. I mean, pretty good at that. <laughs> and so then, yeah, I mean, ultimately, we, the next chunks are by producer, which are chain, 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 Hold chain, on. chain. We didn't get the scheduled transaction size. Yeah, scheduled transaction oh. size. Um, do we need the uh, byte size and CPU, like the unapplied ones for this? The schedule ones, uh, you uh, you get billed for the transaction size, um, you know, in, in terms of RAM. I mean, we could report it for sure. I mean, it could, um, 
you know, total fares may be interesting, but you know, people are actually paying for that ramp. Yeah, so it's less of a worry in terms of abuse vector. Right. So just the total count is probably okay. Unless the other stuff's easy. That's interesting. Something I didn't know. So that's a um, just sort of like a transient RAM usage when you submit a, a transaction before it gets applied. Is that? No, these are the deferred transactions. Uh, oh. These are different than normal transactions. They're actually deprecated, but you know, obviously, you can't really remove them. Remove them, really. Yeah. Never. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> we can certainly discourage their use. All right. Okay. Yeah. So moving on, anything that's by producer, we're going to skip that for now. So by producer, yeah. for all of those, you really mean by node, right? Not by no. producer? By account, technically. <laughs> it's by producer accounts. Yeah. Well, I mean, it could be any number of nodes, hopefully not two nodes at the same time. <laughs> So, well, okay, the way, I'm to under, understand. Yeah, so let me explain oh. how the current system works. So the way it works today is, you know, Node.js prints a lot of logs. And then, um, you know, you'll see like a message like, hey, there was a fork. And if, if you see which producer is producing the block at the current time, then you can kind of blame the fork on that person. Or if you see that a bunch of unapplied, this block is unapplied, unapplied, unapplied. Well, probably they're double producing, right? So we can blame. So it's it's trying to associate some level of blame or you know indication that who who is the problem, um, so you can get oh it's me or somebody else. It, it's the current log reading is not one hundred percent accurate. Uh, because the logs don't exactly tell you, and you have to do some interpretation. So these are not the easiest thing to collect because this is not something Node.js tracks by itself. So this is this is really a would chain you, metric. Yeah, would it be appropriate to split this request into basically two parts and uh, yeah. skip this? Okay, cool. So yeah, we'll, so we can move this now, into a future one, right? That's what we just said. We're going to focus on the Node.js specific things. I'm oh, sorry. One interesting thought on that is in the same concept of just exposing a data point, if it's trackable, what what Matthew's trying to do is more detect it, then try to figure out who easily to point the finger at or gently nudge in a telegram channel, right? But really the key is to be able to detect, hey, there's forking going on on this yeah. chain, yeah. which a simple counter exposure of that from Noto as start time as a local statistic, you'd at least be able to monitor and know that your node is forking because it, it may yeah. not even be the BP's fault, to be honest with you. I've put some potatoes out there that fork on their own. So, yeah, so so absolutely. So if we remove the by producer part out of all of these, counting the number of forks, counting the number of unapplied blocks, counting the number of drop blocks, you know, these are all log, log every time there's a log message that says one of those things, increment counter by one. Should be doable. Right. So my question on like something like this then is do you in Prometheus try to say, okay, a fork happened. Uh, the BP at this point in time should have been this, so I could report that. So that's one way you could do it. Or you could just report number of forks and then a separate Prometheus entry being um, who, uh, when producer schedule changes, right? Um, and just say, you know, it's one of those Boolean things like, okay, it's now it's this producer, now it's this producer. If you had both of those metrics in Prometheus, can you overlay them? to see what you're looking for? Or do you really need like the pro the producer that the fork happened on? Does that make sense? I, I think I'm going to have to go back and get you to say it again. So, um, 
what I'm I understanding so. with Prometheus is like, you know, you, you can graph things, you can see all this information. So I'm wondering if, like, if all we exported was um, the current producer number of forks, then you would, in a time series, you'd see when those forks increase. So you know yep. when it increased in Prometheus. If you had a, a separate Prometheus entry, which was just producer schedule that were that were updating all the time. So it's like, you know, zero one, one, you know, as, mm -hmm. as producers come in and out, if you if you plot those together, it seems like you can see um who's producing during the, the high fork time. Uh, sounds difficult. Okay. I, I mean, could you yes? Um, I mean, you could overlay two different metrics on the same time series yeah, graph, so to say, right? <laughs> but I mean, it's more, and you, or at least I guess I use Clio's for it, but I, mean, well, I already get schedule and I, I mean, I know the current lineup and even the order of VPs somewhere. Well, actually, that, that's another thing is get the current schedule, get the number of schedules. Is that, and I was going to say, is that not coming from an API? I guess I am using Clio. Yeah, so <laughs> currently that's what happens, right? The logging tool gets the current schedule and then right. looks at the log and compares what's the, related to the current schedule and how, uh, you know, the, the the output matches. Which it it doesn't actually handle like when the schedule changes in the middle of a block production round, then it goes ah VP has a problem. Well, actually, no, yeah, I mean I'll be honest. But in my head, it. really, I mean the way it kind of works is you almost need like a reader and doing some of uh, put it in some some relational data and being able to accurately go back and almost read the logs for us. But in aspect of a node monitor, a local API. A, a counter for all of those yeah so does address the alerting side of it yeah so I, i'm quite comfortable with the, the the first version of this and maybe the forever version and we never do the byte producer part but yeah just count the number of forks i think that's reasonable because yeah so is that I mean, a, that, a new request that's not on here that's a, a new uh, version of this now. chain remove the byte producer and then any yeah. metric that doesn't make sense without the by producer, then we remove it from the list. So right, I was about to say most of those. So, so the fork. requests are, yeah, you know, a fork counter every oh, time there's a fork count one, unapplied block every time there's an unapplied block count one, every time there's a drop block, uh, missed blocks you can't do that one because you, would, you have yeah. to know the schedule. Uh, missing, missing producers produce. you can't do that one. Double production you can't do that one. Um, block arrival time. Maybe I think that's probably doable by producer because no no DS has all this info. Maybe it would be hard to do it by average and last. Uh, that might be difficult, but certainly one thing that arrival time is difficult. Sorry, these man. are still effectively chain status information, right? They are. Yeah, and uh, so one question well, I have. Is they are in there. No, no, I'll, I'll say because no, forks is not correct. really a chain. It's about right. the, yeah. the node. Okay, so is it meaningful that it would be these would be counters from the last time that you started up Nodius? Yeah, right? yeah. these are all just counters. Correct. Yeah. yeah, yeah, totally stateful from just startup. Really, just to indicate eight yeah. went to nine. That at least at this time, that at yeah. least tells us and can trigger. And then yeah, you got to go yeah. read a log to see who was producing whatever but exactly also you can trigger a lot of this i mean the the forks not related to the chain purely related to the node and its peering right. and somebody else down the line yeah especially when the node gets off into its own coma state producing on its own problem so that's where michael's coming from on this i uh, actually so, it's the so slow knowing, network the number yeah. of forks on a node is different than the number of forks on another node tells you that that node has a problem. Mm -hmm. yep. So right. I've got forks, unapplied blocks, and dropped blocks. Then we we said missed blocks. Yeah, you, you can't do missing blocks. blocks and missing producers or double production. Yeah. Okay. Those. okay. Do, does block arrival time makes sense here 
That's mind. a really important one from a troubleshooting perspective. Um, you know, you're trying to figure out why there's a fork. Um, block arrival time uh, very often figures into that. It shouldn't be yeah, hard how to do, you do it by that? producer because nobody has logs the I received this block from this producer with this CPU and this net and this whatever. Like there's a very long log line for each one of those. So keeping that uh, should be um, very doable. Okay, but so that, keep... isn't that more related to your holistic view of the data? I mean, that wouldn't be a counter from startup. How would you? How would no, you? No, it would be the that? current value, right? The last or of the last block. The last block. I don't know. Or you? Yeah, no. Well, that's what I say. Just... What are you reporting? You could just do it as a um, as a total and divide by the number of blocks. So if you count the number of blocks received from a producer and the total time it took to receive the producer, then you could divide those two values and get the average. It's not as good as what I have today. Would that be a stateful? collection of the last full round of blocks and then taking no, an saying, average of those. I'm just trying to think of how we Nobody asked us know about look. rounds, right? Really? Oh, I get that. That's why, I mean, how, right? then so how do you just know needs to, group to them? It needs to total it up. You, you can't do it by round. So it just needs to total it up. Every time it receives a block, count the total amount of time, the average time it took to arrive. In my minus two hundred, minus two hundred, <laughs> minus two hundred, minus two hundred five, and then count the number of blocks <coughs> received. Then you can take the the arrival time, divide by the number of blocks, and you get the average amount of time that it took to receive blocks. Is it helpful to have a whole a whole? Well, that's the thing. It's not that helpful to get the whole round because the last block is very different than the rest, and the last block is the most important. Well, and then going so even bigger, broad range. range why would you want every block since it's been started that's an even well you're averaging it out over an hour or whatever or 30 but minutes. it's 21 different people i don't i mean i got yeah, many people that have great latencies and one that's a potato but you do it by producer lost. you do it by producer so brian yeah. has summarized here number of blocks so there's two, received there's by producer two, there's two counters Right. Total number of blocks received by producer and total amount of time it took to receive uh, latency by producer. So you'd have like 21 of that, 21 of that, and then you could divide by the 20. But Michael, I totally agree with you. If you just add them all up and forget the producer, then it's totally useless. That doesn't help at all. But yeah, if you can, I mean, Brian, is that, because that's not a simple counter of a number it's a, it's a it counter with a subtype yeah i mean you're keeping by producer block received yeah. this was all of the time i mean i guess the last hour's worth of time and you get an average back of it i i just i don't i'm trying to think of how that data is stored in memory to then be able to give you it's back. a 64 byte counter tick, 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 tick. The, the problem is that some of the block times are negative, and then you get a positive block time and you get negative, and then they yeah. average out, and then it's uh, so let's skip this one for now. It's a bit complicated. And That's why I was is, trying is to wrap this, my head around it. Yeah. So are these two here that Brian posted in the chat? Number of blocks received by producer counter, total block arrival time by producer counter. Is that a node? Yeah, the doable by the us. node and worth worth like but that's what we're talking about calling that low-hanging fruit or i'm not sure if it's low-hanging fruit and i'm not sure if it's useful even if it was low-hanging fruit okay so not worth well that's what we're trying not to worth out. noting okay right because i think you need a to more do it right, reporting it needs more complication and doing Correct. a that's simple version saying. doesn't give us enough to make it worthwhile Maybe we try to say on this V1, we try to stick with simple, you know, yeah, okay. startup based counters, at least notify something's out there. And then maybe we can start to get into some more of the stateful and analytics of 
the last blocks by the producer, whatever. But okay, um, so let's skip this one. I, I yeah. agree. I think it's getting a bit. The use case is getting, <laughs> yeah, okay. diluted. Then, yeah, exactly. So let's skip this one. Uh, number of transactions. We can probably just count the number of transactions we received. <laughs> Right, it doesn't have to be by producer. Just how I many? So this would be. Is that received or processed? I guess validated. Received. Well, that's good. So there's a couple like number of unique transactions after that gets deduplicated, uh, or the number of total. I I don't know what counters would already be in Node US. I would assume. Uh, I, I assume there's an mind. incoming counter. Right then, it gets deduplicated. Then you can count the number of unique transactions after. So then we can see, if we compare those two counters, we can check how many duplicates we're getting. Right? Because we have like 100 peers, so we get every transaction 100 times, maybe. Or maybe oh, I guess you're times. thinking about from just coming in on I don't know, I guess peer, the right? speculative <laughs> side. I was thinking in my mind, you more meant from like the, the validation side. I mean, there's only ultimately one set of blocks or one set of transactions that's going into the block. I thought you meant transactions yeah. being processed. I did when I wrote that, but then we were saying we said we we're taking out the by producer thing. So then I need to correct, correct. That's and I'm I'm trying to think of how that morphed, but is it helpful? I think it would be super interesting because I have no clue right now how many duplicate transactions I get. Like, well, but that's, the bandwidth that's is huge. That's a counter of how many total transactions you get. Yeah. I mean, if we can get it by connection, then even better. Right, the number of incoming transactions by the peer on the peer to peer or via the API. Right? How many transactions were submitted to the API? Doesn't it have to open the blocks up? I mean, no. We're not looking at forget the blocks. This is just looking at the unapplied transactions as they're arriving on the peer to peer or the API. Right? So all these transactions are arriving on the spec it's still on the all yeah, the speculative outside side yeah presumably though under normal conditions the reason you receive duplicates is because multiple peers are sending them to you right Correct. so Correct. is it helpful if we if you did it by peer how how would you account for total versus unique does that you get what i'm saying well, it would, the, the unique counter could not be by peer. Yeah, okay. The so so counter right. would be by peer, and the unique would be by, well, after yeah. you you duplicated it, then which peer came from is irrelevant. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so number of transactions received by peer and number of unique transactions received. Yeah. And the peer could be a peer to peer, or it could be an API. Mm -hmm. So maybe those are two different things. I'm curious if that had, like, I know Ross runs 200 peers or something on his public API, knowing that that could be a pretty heavy stateful set. I mean, is that any issue? It's fine when it's three peers. <laughs> What's it like when you're tracking, you know, I mean, oh, these, these the public details. APIs? What's that going to do to that? I, I don't know. I, I It may just be 200 rows is no problem, but. I don't know. 200 rows doesn't seem like that. I mean, we don't have an infinite number of peer-to-peer -peer connections, right? True, they're, but they're, mine they're, are much lower than Ross's, I can tell you. Yeah, that. mine are in the 50, like, oh. 75 range. And then when it gets too big, then I create another one. But, you know, 200 doesn't seem like that big. Uh, as a public, because, But it's also going to be state. I mean, it's going to be since node launch, so to say. I mean, so yeah. every single IP that, that just gets peppered in 
Well, but I don't know. That seems like a, a back door that could cause some. Well, the uh, the other thing that I will add to address your thing, because I agree, is that at some point, if you didn't receive any data from that peer, then the metric needs to go away, right? You need to expire the metrics. Otherwise, your your document just gets huge. Yeah, I think right? you'd, you'd clear that out when you close the connection. It's right, only, exactly. It's only uh, open connections that you're getting that information from. You'd clear it out after when the connection closes. every connection closed? Yeah, to close, which means you might miss some information right near the close of the connection. Yeah, not a between deal. your last metric call and when you close, you don't miss that amount of information. But I mean, that's really probably the, the the time to do it, as opposed to wait some amount of time and clear it out later. Um, but yeah, makes sense. Like say, I've got some weird peer to peer traffic that. It's not a connection. It's like a peppering, but yeah, we have, we have that's, that's, all the time. The load balancer sees people connect, disconnect, connect, disconnect. Correct, like, but all the other chains. Like, it's only on my heavy long chain. chain. Yeah, okay. Possibly, it it could possibly <laughs> be a wrong chain. That okay, but anyway, that's why I was like, I know not all peer to peer is a steady connection, although normally it is. Um, but yeah, that that. So there's another one. Number of connections on the wrong chain. Number of new connections, yeah. number of currently connected, right? So, um, oh, I mean, I right. guess, I mean, that's it. That'd be in the dot net or the net plugin, but yeah, it's different than the net plugin. It's the peer to peer plugin. So, like, how many connections do we have? How many are uh, working? How many are defined that are working? How many are defined that are not working, right? Because we have a peer to peer entry in our config file. We can't look up the DNS name anymore. Um, you know, outbound. does it do error counts? I mean, that, yeah, I remember it seeing at least retry yeah, yeah. attempts. So get, get no DRS connections or whatever the API call is, uh, has a whole bunch of stats there. Okay. That's it. I may just not look for it. <laughs> I hadn't been, I think, I, I, think I missed a couple here. Did I miss anything that I should write down that I missed? I think there was a couple that Brian, number of transactions received per peer. I think there was a second one there. Uh, number of unique transactions received. Yeah, and the per peer can be, there's two parts to it. There's the peer-to-peer -peer connections and the API. Yeah, number, uh, sorry, which one here? Uh, number of the fourth from the bottom. It says per peer uh -huh. slash API. So those would actually be like two separate types for that, is that? Yeah, could be. Or you could have a special peer called API. <laughs> and these are all node metrics. So we've simplified the what would have been a chain metric and turned them into what can be done. Yeah, we're trying to metrics. do. We're trying to focus on node metrics, right? So we don't have to do any weird. Yeah, you know, basically turn them into counters is that some way of knowing, you may not have all the detail related to it, but some, if you're looking at all of them, when the it change is good enough to get an alert, but then you can go look at yeah. a log to go figure right. out what's going on. Yeah. Cool. We are getting close to the uh, top of the hour here. And I yeah. We are. Hard stop. Uh, any final thoughts in the last two minutes? Did we get through the list? We didn't get those the lights at the bottom, but yeah, just quickly the ones at the bottom: uptime, CPU usage by Sera, disk space use. Those are all, uh, you node, know, yeah, node related. So I think those should be useful. Rocks all the way to obsolete, disk so space. Those, okay, those RocksDB not related. necessary. Cool. Yeah, RocksDB and Block Vault have been since removed, so those are no longer relevant. So, but those are okay. the ones that are good. Okay. A so replay this... status. That put that one on there. I like Which that one? one. That last one on that list. Replay status. Oh my God. Some way or another. <laughs> is, is that a, uh, in scope? Node node metricable? It's node metricable. Yeah. I mean, current replay block, maybe. I don't know. 
I don't even, I, I assume that's maybe in the state somewhere or queryable. Maybe it'd be last latest block in the block log would be what it's replayed up to, right? That makes sense? Yeah. Yeah, current block number, I think, is maybe what we're looking for here, right? Because your yeah. get info shuts down during a replay. I mean, ultimately, if get info worked, I think <laughs> with that block yeah, that number, would be, you that would be fine. But so is Prometheus going to be shut down during replay as well. <laughs> uh, fair enough. Can that be on the get info? Can you turn the get info back on? <laughs> I mean, we can if you want to slow down your replay. Uh, I mean, trade offs, right? Well, get info is heavy too, as I understand. Anyway, I know we're out of time, but I it sounds like maybe that's outside of this scope because it yeah, would shut I mean, down the whole plugin, right? I mean, well, if you're doing a sync, you can certainly get. Get, you know, get info works and you can report yep. your current block number. And I think current block number is useful outside of anything, right? That way, if you, you've got, you know, by looking at Prometheus, if you've got a node that's way behind, right? Correct, correct. I, we, we check head and lib and stuff like that. But, and that's what I say, as long as it's there, we use get info and, and whatever or current block. But yeah, during a replay, that is brutal yeah, the, because they replay for weeks <laughs> i don't yeah the problem is there's no metrics whatsoever in a replay right so you're correct. the only way to understand what's going on is read logs so oh the replay finished up oh, it just magically came online anyway yeah. so i would say that was that's a nice thing on there does it need to be in this scope because it's not going to be in the prometheus plugin or even get info right now so maybe it's not in this scope and we finish up but don't forget that one Put it in the bottom list. Yeah, current block number. And so, I would say. So uh, this one we're calling out of scope? I would think so. Uh, but the current block number is in scope. But that was at the beginning. Yeah, but it, it, not during a replay. Yeah, not during a replay, no. But yeah. the get info was listed at the top. Get current. Correct. Yeah, number. I was about to say that's that's already there, assuming it's on. So, yeah, so you can but I that. saw that and I was but like, that, no, 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 that was the thing. stage. <laughs> Cool. Anyway, I got to run to another meeting. That's all. Thanks, everyone. So, are we have we exhausted this topic? Are we back back next week talking the same thing or a resource model? I think let them kind of run with it and try to work some stuff up in scope or whatever. But um, maybe yeah, we talk about resource model or at least that's a that's a holding point. But but yeah, I, I think this is a good set to keep Brian and team busy, right? <laughs> Cool. Yeah. And then we're heading into the holidays. Uh, I'm thinking we like the last two weeks of December, maybe we take a pause for Christmas time. So next week might be the, the last call for the year and we pick it back again in, in the new year. Uh, so we'll see what we can do to coordinate a talk on resource model for next week and uh, and then enjoy the holidays. Thanks, Daniel. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Okay, buddy.